you found Wicked on Wisconsin, your one-stop podcast for all things Packers, Brewers, Bucks, and the rest of your favorite teams from all over the state of Wisconsin. We're powered by Wisconsin Sports Heroics, online at wisportsheroics.com. And the Wisconsin Podcast Association. And now, here's your host, Mike Wicked. Hey, what's up? Cannot believe that we are doing a podcast about a 3-4 and four Green Bay Packers team. This Green Bay Packers team at 3-4. and four. Cannot believe that is what we are doing, but that is where we are at. You know, if you would have told me a month ago, if you would have told me three and a half weeks ago, that when the Packers were 3-1, and one, you would have said, Wicket, you're going to be doing a podcast a few weeks from now after a game in London with the Giants, a game at Lambeau with the Jets, and a road game at the Commanders. Green Bay is going to be 3-4. and four. I would have said you're an idiot. I would have said that Aaron Rodgers must have been hit by a bus. Apparently the entire offense has been hit by a bus. That's one of the only logical explanations somebody can make about this team and this offense and how in the heck we are now looking at his squad that is three and four. That you can, if you want to stop talking about the Super Bowl, fine. If you want to stop talking about the playoffs, fine. It's tough to find another win on this schedule right now. And then to get to a very important question posed to me by one of our listeners uh, who sent it in on Twitter. We'll get to that. I want to remind you the podcast is brought to our friends at Great Lakes Drag Away, the fastest quarter mile in, in the entire Midwest. Over there in Union Grove, Wisconsin. You know that term, I feel the need, the need for speed. Well, it came back into the mainstream this summer. Guess what? They always have that going on at Great Lakes Drag Away. They've got nights for bikes, for hot rods, for trucks, for nitrous rides. If you want to check out their entire schedule to see what the right night might be for you and your family, because it's awesome family entertainment, greatlakesdragaway.com. And we're recording this six days out from Halloween, which means at some point soon the snow is going to fly and they're going to be closed until the spring. And that's okay. That's what happens. But I bet with 60 days until Christmas that you probably have a gearhead, a race fan on your Christmas list. If that is the case, Check out GreatLakesDragAway.com and buy uh, a, uh, a gift card. They make awesome stocking stuffers or just Christmas gifts themselves. GreatLakesDragAway.com. Do it today. Again, GreatLakesDragAway.com. And I cannot thank those guys for being business partners of mine for over 10 years. They are fantastic, and I, uh, I implore you, please support them. They have supported me. Great Lakes Dragaway. Again, online, GreatLakesDragAway.com. All right, so Packers lose at D.C., Another game where they play half of a half of a decent football game. Another halftime lead that goes away. Another game where you left you're left scratching your head about why 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 are we doing this? Why are we doing that? It's like I don't want to be doing the same exact podcast that I do every single week, where I sit here and tell you I don't know why they don't run the ball, even though uh, Matt Lafleur tells me they want to run the ball. I don't know why Aaron Rodgers is inaccurate. I don't know why the defense all of a sudden turtles in the second half. I don't know why this coaching staff can't adjust to what other teams are doing, whereas guys like Brian Dable and Robert Sally and their staff, Rod Rivera, can apparently make all the correct adjustments after halftime, and Green Bay can't. I don't want to do this podcast the same every single week. But it's the same stuff. It really is. You know, I got a a tweet sent to me from uh, Adam. Adam Mulhern on Twitter sent this to me. And I want to uh, make sure that I get it right. So Adam sent this to me. And I gave him a pretty good answer on Twitter, but, of course, I teased it and said I'd get more. He wrote, wrote, uh, out of 100%, who gets what percentage of the blame for the Packers' horrid play? General Manager Brian Gutekunst, Head Coach Matt LaFleur, Defensive Coordinator Joe Barry, or Quarterback Aaron Rodgers. And you can follow him on Twitter at CoachAdam79. And here was my answer. This is my answer. And I'm going to... The two that I think get the least blame on this are Goot and Barry. But out of 100%, if my only options are those four, I'll give them each a 15% blame. I'll start with Barry. And a lot of this has to do with the fact that We can blame the GM, the coach, the coordinator, whatever. Even the quarterback falls into this conversation. Players have to play better. That's just how it is. I mean, if you want to look at Joe Barry's scheme, I know some people are really trashing Barry's scheme. He actually gets pressure without bringing a lot of blitz. 
And if you're able to do that, that means you have plenty of guys in the secondary, and you know the Packers love to play nickel. They love to have that extra DB. So they're getting they're one of the highest pressure rates with their front four in the National Football League, especially last week. They beat the snot out of Taylor Heineke last week. They're getting pressure. Guys aren't doing their job in the back half of the defense. I mean, who's playing above where they played last year? I had a conversation with Mike Holmgren earlier this week. Mike Holmgren and I were talking. And Holmgren was talking about every week, especially when that 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 96 team that went on to win the Super Bowl in January of 97, Super Bowl 31, he said, I need more out of you than you gave me last week. I need more out of you than you gave me last week. I gave, I need more out of you than you gave me last week. Who on the Packers' defense is giving you more than they gave you last year other than Kenny Clark? Rashawn Gary is having a great year rushing the passer, but he's a mediocre run stuffer or a mediocre edge setter. Preston Smith is giving you about what you got last year. Devondre Campbell's not giving you what you paid him for. All pro level play? He's made, what, one spectacular play this year? He's missed more tackles this year than he missed last year. You can blame Barry all you want, and you are free to do that, and that's fine. But guys have to make plays. How about all the money they paid to Jair Alexander? And in the two biggest pass plays he's defended in last week's game against Washington, and maybe the two biggest plays of the year with everything on the line, he got punked by Terry McLaurin. You can blame Barry all you want, and that's fine, but guys have to make plays. The, you know, guy like uh, Jair, who talks a lot of trash about how great he is, and I believe he's got the talent to be a top three, top two DB in the league. You don't get punked by Terry McLaurin twice in the final two minutes of that game. The play where he didn't knock McLaurin out of bounds and the play where McLaurin beat him to the ball. And that basically sealed the deal before we got to that circus play at the end of the game that had half a percentage point of actually being successful. You can blame the defensive coordinator because it's low-hanging fruit, and that's fine. Barry's defense isn't terrible. Statistically... They're good. They're getting pressure. They don't stop the run real well. <laughs> we know that. But I put 15% of the blame to Adam's Twitter question on Barry, and I put 15% on Goot. And again, Goot's built a good roster sans wide receivers. All right? Built he the offense, I believe Brian Gutekinds was banking on Aaron Rodgers carrying the offense and it being upper half of the uh, of the NFL this year, but since he has taken over, he has had to turn Dom Capers' scraps into Mike Pettin's trash into what is now statistically a good defense. Not paying all that much attention to the offense because the mindset was Aaron Rodgers will carry us. We lost Devontae. He didn't want to be here. I have a whole podcast on Devontae. I'm not mad at Devontae. I understand. But the plan didn't work or hasn't worked to this point. Your team's now three and four. But I don't put everything on Gudekins. I don't put everything on Joe Barry. I put 35% of the blame on each on Matt LaFleur and, and Aaron Rodgers. And again, those are my options. Goot, LaFleur, Barry, and Rodgers. I'll talk about LaFleur here for a second. I, I, I mentioned this last week, and I mentioned it on the tweet, and Adam wanted to know what I meant by it. <sighs> the head coach needs to be in control. You know who's in control of the Patriots? Bill Belichick's in control of the Patriots. All right? You know who's in, you know, it, who's in control of the Kansas City Chiefs? Andy Reid's in control of the Kansas City Chiefs. Mahomes listens to Andy Reid. McDermott's in charge in Buffalo. You know who listens to him? Jo- uh, Josh Allen. Green Bay is going to get a whole lot of Josh Allen coming up. The head coach is in control, needs to be in control. And every press conference I hear from Matt LaFleur sounds like he's not the guy in control, that 12 is the one calling the shots. 
that 12 is the head coach, that Rodgers is the head coach and not Matt LaFleur. Oh, well, we got to run the ball more. You ran the ball 12 times against Washington. Your running backs had 12 carries. Who controls the play call? Oh, well, we send in two with Aaron and he could stop sending in two with Aaron. Stop giving Aaron Rodgers the autonomy with his lack of playmakers out there and hand the ball off to your best playmaker, who is right now Aaron Jones. And what is going on with situational play calling? Twice now with big games on the line. The London game, late in the game, third and two. You remember, they threw twice. They have a 247-pound running back they took in the second round a couple of years ago named A.J. Dillon, who, by the way, had four carries in this football game against Washington. He and Aaron Jones should be able to get you the two yards you needed in that game against the Giants. Fast forward, Sunday, midfield, fourth and one. You remember the play. Huge moment in the game. Huge moment in the game. What happens? Again, fourth and one at midfield. You have a 350-pound left tackle. You have a 247-pound running back. Hand the ball off. Get a yard. No, what do they do? They ran some play where Sammy Watkins missed a pick. Romeo dubs. Ball bounces in his hands. He gets tackled. Didn't matter. Ball goes the other way. Huge momentum shift. Green Bay's offense can't afford to get fancy and tricky on plays when you just need to slam the ball in the belly of your running back who weighs 247 pounds when you need one Yard. I'm not asking A.J. Dillon to pick that up on third and five. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. Or Aaron Jones. Fine. Fourth and one. That's on Matt LaFleur. Don't give your quarterback, who is a Hall of Famer and a four-time MVP, every chance in the world to get out of whatever play call that they want. You needed two yards in London. You needed one yard in D.C. You know what you got? Two batted balls at a drop. Why Why are we making this so high? And then it comes to the, you know, I need to make sure Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon get my touches, or get their touches. Then do it. Call a running play. Call three running plays. You know when the, the, the Packers offense looked the best on Sunday against Washington? The, the second drive. And the first two drives combined, Aaron Jones had seven touches for like 38 yards and a touchdown. You know why? Because he's the best playmaker they've got. What? After those two drives, it's like they go away from it. They stop using motion. They only use motion on five or less plays in the entire game. Was that what simplifying the offense was? Was that your call, Matt? Where's the Lafleur ball? We've seen the Lafleur ball work to perfection this year at times, and they go away from it. Who's the guy not calling Lafleur ball? Lafleur? Or is it 12? So I ask you again, who's in control of this team? Who's in control of the offense? Was Nathaniel Hackett that vital? Doesn't look like it. Was Luke Getze that vital? Doesn't look like it. Although the Bears looked pretty okay the other night on Monday Night Football. I'm not a screamer and a yeller. But I'm pissed off hearing the same thing every single week, watching the exact same every single single week, and I'm watching an offense that ain't broke getting fixed, but fixed to do something completely different that doesn't work. So that brings me to Aaron Rodgers. You know, Aaron Rodgers was under pressure 8.5% of the time against Washington. That was the, the, the cleanest run of a pocket, or the longest run of a clean pocket that Aaron Rodgers had the entire year so far. Do you know what his quarterback rating was with a clean pocket? 57.1. Pathetic. This is all from Pro Football Focus. So you can blame anybody you want. Aaron Rodgers' quarterback rating was 57.1 when he wasn't under pressure. That's not from me. That's from the nerds at Pro Football Focus. What else does he need? 
You're not – I mean, you watch the game. How many one-hoppers and balls low and outside and away from receivers was he throwing? It didn't matter if it was Tunyon or if it was Lazard or if it was Dubs. I mean, the best catch of the day was made by Sammy Watkins late when he slid – to try to get the clock stopped, that was a high ball too. Aaron Rodgers is a four-time MVP. He is the reigning two-time MVP in the National Football League. If the Bucs are going to be great and the Bucs are going to win a championship, Giannis has to play like an MVP. If the Brewers are going to be great and if the Brewers are going to win uh, the, the World Series, Christian Yelich has to play like an MVP. Guess what? One guy has, one guy has not. If the Packers are going to contend for the North, win the uh, the NFC, and go to the Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers has to play like an MVP, and he has not. You can tell me about wide receivers. You can tell me about a shuffled offensive line, and I agree with you about the offensive line. But when Aaron Rodgers was given a clean pocket, he sucked. At D.C., at the Commanders. Here's the other thing about Aaron Rodgers, too. All of a sudden, Aaron Rodgers has become a statue. Aaron Rodgers doesn't run anymore. I think he's on pace to have 22 carries this year. 22. It's the lowest he will have had in 15 years. That was one of the things that made Aaron Rodgers great. That's one of the things that makes Patrick Mahomes great, makes Josh Allen great, even Justin Herbert great. Is there a threat to run? If you take the legs out of Aaron Rodgers and you know he's not going to run and you know that they often will audible out of any running play, you know what's coming. They want him to pass. He is inaccurate right now. He seemingly is hesitant right now. So now you're taking away the threat of him getting out of the pocket. You're taking away the threat of him handing the ball off. There's no – I mean, you know – they're, they're not going to be giving the ball to Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon out of the backfield. They want him to throw because he can't throw down the field. Everything is low. All of a sudden, it is scary to say this, and I'm a big fan of Aaron Rodgers on the field. All right, my kids have Aaron Rodgers jerseys. I've got an Aaron Rodgers jersey. Aaron Rodgers is a huge piece of why the Packers suck right now. And he goes on the Pat McAfee show today, and he says, guys who are making too many mistakes shouldn't be playing, got to start cutting some reps. Maybe guys who aren't playing, maybe give them a chance. Who is, is he not talking about himself? Yes, there are mistakes being made by rookies. Romeo Dubs on a play where he's going up on the right-hand side, The DB short leaves a ton of space to the corner. Dubs plants and runs a post. Aaron sees the plant and throws the ball to the wide open space. Yes, 100%. That's a mistake by Dubs. You're supposed to be able to recognize where the defensive back and the safety are. That's one of the things that made Jordy Nelson, that made Greg Jennings, that made uh, Devontae Adams so special. But Aaron Rodgers is still missing so many guys. Everything is low. What about some accountability? What about Aaron Rodgers saying, I'm the one where it starts? It starts with me, not, well, guys got to do this and I got to play a tick better. Aaron Rodgers is having a bad year. All right? A bad year. Here's another stat for you. So if you're familiar with EPA, The statistic is used to try to define how many points a player or play is worth to a team. Every play is considered with context in mind, meaning down, distance, and field position are used to evaluate the amount of EPA compared to the actual result of the play. They rank these quarterbacks, all right? There are 43 right now in the National Football League who have thrown 25 passes so far. And EPA is an important stat if you're into the statistics and the nerdness of this. Where do you think Aaron Rodgers ranks 1 to 43 in EPA? He's behind Joe Flacco, Jacoby Brissett, Jameis Winston, Kenny Pickett. 
Cooper Rush, Brett Rippon, Zach Wilson, Skylar Thompson, and Teddy Bridgewater. Aaron Rodgers is 37th in EPA. That from Anthony Cover one on Twitter. Pro underscore Ant. Aaron Rodgers is 37th in EPA. Blame whoever you want. This is on Aaron. Now, why? Rookie receivers, Watkins in and out of the lineup, shuffled offensive line. What about that thumb? What about that Aaron Rodgers thumb? You know, he heard it at the end of the Giants game, throwing the Hail Mary. What if Aaron really is bothered by that thumb? Some will call it an excuse. I'll call it a reason. I was doing a lot of thinking about this. I actually, this kept me up last night. I was going to record this podcast today, but last night I'm laying in bed and my brain will not shut off because I have this theory. If the Packers are going to get to the playoffs, and I know that seems like a real long shot right now. They're three and four. Here are their next six games. Five games. If the Packers are going to get to the playoffs next year, if the Packers are going to get to the playoffs this year, their next five games are Buffalo this way, uh, this Sunday night. They've got to go through the Bills at 5-1 and one, Sunday night football. Then they go to Detroit. Not easy. Despite how bad Detroit is, they just stink at Ford Field. Then Dallas at 5-2, and two, the McCarthy Bowl. Then Tennessee, 4-2. and two, Good luck stopping Derrick Henry. And then they're at Philly. The undefeated, currently, undefeated Eagles. How many of those are they going to win with Aaron Rodgers and the bad thumb? One? Two? You think they're getting three? I don't see three. Not with the way he's throwing. And if the thumb is the problem, if the thumb is the problem, shut him down for three weeks. I know. Wicket, Jordan Love's not winning games either. That's fine. Jordan Love is probably not going to win at Buffalo. He might win in Detroit. That's the one game I think you look at on the schedule. You're like, that's the best chance for one-thumbed Aaron or Jordan Love to win. Detroit stinks. Their defense is horrendous. It'll probably be a good game regardless of who's quarterback. Dallas 5-2. and two. If somehow Jordan Love can get you to... Cooper Rush won five games as the Cowboys' starting quarterback. Jordan Love's better than Cooper Rush. And you know what Cooper Rush playing for Dallas did? It made that defense become elite. Outside of Micah Parsons, nobody in that defense was really playing at an elite level. Guess what? That defense won them some football games while Dak Prescott was hurt. Why not do it with Jordan Love and Aaron Rodgers? I'm not saying he needs surgery like Dak did, and if he did, then maybe we should have shut this thing down two weeks ago for Aaron. And I don't know if if Love beats the Jets. I don't know if Love beats the Commanders. But why not shut down Aaron like the Cowboys shut down Dak for three weeks, let that thing heal, see if Jordan Love can get you one win. Because it's not like you look at this schedule like Aaron's going to go 4-1. and one. Aaron Rodgers can't take a handoff. But LaFleur said earlier that thumb prohibits them from play, having him play under center. That's why he's in the gun all the time. And running plays are never as effective in the gun as they are un, when, when a quarterback is under center. I mean, the ball gets there, you hand it, or that little stupid pitch they always do, the running back doesn't have any momentum going. So if Aaron can't run, if Aaron can't take a handoff, and if Aaron is inaccurate because of the thumb, why not shut him down for three weeks? Cooper Rush won a bunch of games filling in for Dak Prescott when they did this. I'm not saying Jordan Love's going to go to Buffalo and win and Detroit win and, and beat Dallas, but he's got as good of a chance as Aaron Rodgers does, and maybe we'll find this out. Do you think the run-pass ratio will be 35-12 to with Jordan Love as the quarterback? No, it won't be. I want to find out if it's Rodgers calling the plays and Rodgers changing the plays and Rodgers audibling, or is that LaFleur? Because if it's going to be Love calling the plays, 
I guarantee you he's not going to be throwing almost three to one as opposed to runs. I know it's a crazy idea and people are going to think I'm hating on Rodgers, but no. If you can get me Aaron Rodgers healthy for the final, we had what, 11 games left, seven, 10 games left right now? If you can get me Aaron Rodgers healthy for the final six or seven of those games, they have a much better chance of going five and two over those final seven games or six and one with Rodgers at quarterback with two healthy thumbs than they do with one thumbed Rodgers trying to play through all these games and that thumb never quite getting right. And here's one other thing, going back to Brian Gudikins too, before we get out of here. Shout out to my buddy Nick Packard, by the way. If you are a, a small business or a medium-sized business, one of my incredible sponsors, my shout out to uh, Nick Packard right there in Franklin, Wisconsin. NickPackard.com can help you grow your business on the internet, all right? That's where everybody does these business uh, does business these days, right? Let's say you own a small business and you're selling uh, potato chips or whatever. Somebody types in potato chips. How quickly does your name come to the top of the Google list? Well, that means if you're not getting anywhere near the top, your SEO stinks. As a matter of fact, uh, my nanny is sick, and I Googled, and I stayed home with my kids the last two days, and I Googled indoor playground near me. And a place named Juju came up. It's, in, it's right down the street from me. You know what? It was the first thing that came up. You know why? Because their SEO is great. That's right. Their search engine optimization, whatever they're doing, is great. Nick Packard can do that for you. Google anything. What's the first thing that comes up near me? That's where Nick can come in, take a look at whatever you're doing, and help you get to the front center portion of the internet. That's what you want. You want people to see you, to click on you, to buy you. And the cool thing is, you work directly with Nick. He doesn't have like a whole stack of people to get to, interns, part-timers, before you get to him. You work one-on-one with him. He's fractional, so you only pay for the time that you need. If you're a small business or a medium-sized business, get a hold of my guy, Nick Packard, today. NickPackard.com. And just for listening to the podcast, you get a free digital ecosystem assessment. He's going to look at your website, your social channels, your email marketing. Sign up directly so you know how you're doing. NickPackard.com, NP Connect, the marketing agency redefined online today. NickPackard.com. And tell him that Mike Wickett said hi. One other thing here. The Jets are not exactly an organization that you want to emulate, right? Like you don't think of, man, great leadership, smart team management, New York Jets. But the Jets should be what Brian Gudikins is looking at. You know, New York's what, 4-2, and two, I think? 4-2, four 4-3. and, two, four and three. They're actually in the mix for all of this. Their defense is very good. Sauce Gardner looks like he's going to be the real deal, but maybe a top-10 defensive back in the NFL already, even into his rookie year. They've got plenty of firepower at the wide receiver spot, despite Elijah Moore wanting out. They had their stud rookie, Brees Hall, go down, and that sucks. Brees Hall is done for the year, tore his, I think, his ACL, and that sucks. So you would think they'd be like, well, we're not going to punt on the year. We're going to play this year out. We got Michael Carter as his backup. Whoever else, maybe we can find somebody on the scrap heap. No, you know what they did? The day after they lost their stud rookie running back, they went out and called the Jacksonville Jaguars and said, give us James Robinson. What do you want? Oh, a sixth-round pick? That's it? For your split back with Travis Etienne? Done. Packers fans had to see that move and get livid with Brian Gutekunst. The Packers never fill a need when one arises. You know, I know, there are problems on this team. Wide receiver doesn't solve all the problems. I go back to my conversation about 12. The offensive line actually played okay for its first time together ever in that game against Washington. But the Packers have had this need at wide receiver now for seven weeks, and it's glaring. Now Lazard's in a sling. You know Sammy Watkins isn't going to last through Thanksgiving. Romeo Dubs can't catch anything, and apparently Aaron Rodgers is calling for either Samari Toure or Jamon Winfrey to get more playing time. What are we doing here? I've never said this before, but be like the Jets. They were aggressive. James Robinson's a stud. Two years ago, he was the rookie of the year. Two years ago... The dude had, I think he led the league in scrimmage yards as an undrafted player. He was a stud. Urban Meyer came in and screwed that up and uh, drafted Travis Etienne, which was a dumb move. But regardless, they're going with Etienne. 
The Jets looked at that and said, we're going to bring in James Robinson because we're going to go for it. Who knows what's going to happen? We think we can play with Buffalo. We think we can hang with Miami. Apparently, New England's not very good this year. If the playoffs started today, the Jets are in the playoffs right now. And as long as you're in, check the Bengals, as long as you're in, you have a shot to go to the Super Bowl, just like Cincinnati did last year. Meanwhile, with Jerry Judy apparently on the block, Chase Claypool is on the block, DJ Moore is a pipe dream because the Panthers paid him too much money already and guaranteed money. They're not going to give up on him. But all of these, there are wide receivers out there to be had to fill a need. And what are the Packers doing? Does a wide receiver solve all problems? No, but it helps. And they need help. All right? Go find a James Robinson. Chase Claypool fits. He's cheap. Give up a third-round pick for him. So what? Your window with Rodgers is closing by the second. And whether or not it's already closed this year, I don't know. At 3-4 and four, with this stretch, Buffalo, Detroit, Dallas, Tennessee, and Philly, come out of that 2-3 and three and I'll feel okay. 3-2 and two and I'll feel great. It's so frustrating to watch this team operate the same day in and day out, whether it's the coach, whether it's the quarterback, whether it's the, the general manager, whether it's the defensive coordinator who I think is getting a bad rap. He's not great. He's not terrible. All right, that's it. That's it. I've gone through everything. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you agree with me. And if you don't, let me know. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Wicket, Mike Wicket Media on Facebook, uh, Wisconsin Sports Heroics, WI Sports Heroics. This is on their Facebook page, too, so you can chat about it if you would like. But that's that's it, the, the boiling frustration after that game. The fact that it came by the way, the fact that it came down to a ridiculous ten lateral play, and Rodgers was the one to screw the whole thing up at the end by throwing the forward lateral. I don't know if it's poetic justice, pathetic, or just the Packers in twenty twenty two. Dude, thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for downloading. Tell a Packers fan about the podcast. Rate review, subscribe, wherever you are listening. We're on every single platform, uh, which is so very, very cool. And thanks to our sponsors, Nick Packard, helping out your small and medium-sized business, nickpackard.com. Great Lakes Dragway in Union Grove, Wisconsin, greatlakesdragway.com. My name is Mike Wicket. This has been Wicket on Wisconsin. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, it's not, we may have to maybe do the Packers last year, but go Pack Go, go Bucks, and go Brewers.